Welcome everyone to the Tuesday edition of the Brum is Blue show. It is February the 8th, 2022, and I'm as always Craig Hadley. Before we get into the show, a quick update from the club that has just been posted in the last 20 minutes or so. Our fifth round FA Cup tie with Women's Championship Durham will take place on Sunday the 27th of February with a kickoff of 2pm. It's as expected really, I didn't think this game was going to get picked up for TV coverage with some of the other ties in the draw. But without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about the big game from the weekend, the 2-1 defeat to Leicester City. Birmingham City started this game pretty slowly. They were being dominated in, uh, across the park, really. They were being a bit bullied, if I'm honest, about how they were playing. Then the big turning point came when there was a sending off in the 26th minute of the game. We'll go into the highlights to have a look at this one. It is one which... To be honest, I'm still really angry about, but we'll we'll look into it and then we'll uh, critique it as we go. Then the ball's played over the top. There's the d defense doesn't do good enough here. Bex Holloway bad header. Then Harriet Scott bad header. Bad touch by Bex, and then Jess Sigsworth pokes the ball past the goalkeeper, and the referee brandishes a straight red card for the goalkeeper. But we'll go over it once more. Then so we'll look at the incident. As. Okay, so Freya Gregory does really well here to take on two Blues defenders and cause real trouble with the defence. It goes to Jess Sigsworth here. At this moment, you're thinking Jess Sigsworth just needs to slot it past the keeper and get the goal. She, she opts to shoot to the keeper's right here, her left-hand side. And the keeper, as you can see, makes an attempt to put her body across the ball, dives to her right, and the trailing legs are what catches Jess Sigsworth and it awards the penalty kick. A penalty kick, in my opinion, is the correct decision, decision here. It, it is a penalty, it is a foul. But as we look at the rules of the game, this is not, according to the rules at least, my interpretation of the rules, as someone who's done the refereeing course, that this is a red card. So we'll look at it now. As the laws of the game state, where a player commits an offence against an opponent within their own penalty area, which denies an opponent, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity and the ref awards a penalty kick, the offending player is cautioned if the offence was an attempt to play the ball. In, other, in all other circumstances, i.e. holding, pulling, pushing, no possibility to play the ball, etc., the offending player must be sent off. So if we look at it one more time before we move on. So the ball there, the ball is, she plays it around the, around the, around the keeper and the keeper dives to her right-hand side to make an attempt at the ball. In the referee's opinion, this is not an attempt to get to the ball and then gives her a red card. So it, it's your interpretation of the rules, but I don't think that can be categorized as not attempting. She's not just grabbing her and rugby tackling her to the floor. She is making an attempt to get the ball, even though she doesn't get the ball. So in that instance, I think it is a bad decision and it shouldn't have been a red card. So that, in, that moment really changed the game because they're ten, down to 10 players with majority of the game left to go and as we will see it continues to get worse for Birmingham City the red card and we'll move on so Jess Sigsworth with the penalty kick sends the keeper the wrong way and it is 1-0 so after that it's all all into trouble and then Leicester City again breaking through Jess Sigsworth again causing issues leads to a corner kick and this again a defensive error which costs Birmingham City two goals in the first half. They're already down to 10 players and then this happens. Ball played in from the penalty kick. Gemma Perfield plays the ball in. And a mixture of Christy Murray and Via Tricky Sorry at the front post don't do enough to affect play. And the keeper who is positioned for the corner kick if we go back at the back post. So she's looking for the deep cross played in. She has to make her way from the back post all the way to the front post to even get a hand on this. So in reality, the defenders need to do better to clear the ball before it even gets the chance to bounce near the near post for that one. So 2-0 down and it's all kinds of trouble for Birmingham City. And they're trying to, as the game progresses, to get back into this one. And eventually they do get a goal back late on. We'll try and find that for you now. This is the moment. So Via Tricky Sorry wins the ball back in the Leicester City penalty area. 
and the run here by Lu Louise Quinn, watch it, on the edge of the box here. She makes the late run towards the back post. Fear Tricky Sara with a great ball, looks at once, plays the ball, pinpoint, beats the keeper, and it's a good header. And then you'll see a real good fight for the ball from Gemma Lawley here. You can see the fight that she wants to get the ball and restart play as quickly as possible. That is the sort of fight we needed in the first half, which we didn't see from the Birmingham City team, which was a bit disappointing in that regard. But it was good to see Birmingham City fighting really late on with 10 players to get back into this game. And it looked like we were going to get an equaliser as the play um, carried on. But then an error here by Gemma Lawley. She had a good game apart from this. A bit of a bit of a mix up here. She loses the ball on the halfway line. You've got three players back, but she's managed to beat the defender one on one now with the keeper. Takes it past the keeper, looks to shoot, hits the post, which is unfortunate. Then this is the moment where Leicester Sidder scored. Plays it out to Paige Bailey-Gale. She's cleared off the line by Bex Holloway, redeems herself from that early error that led to the first goal. And at this point, the momentum looked like Birmingham City would go on to get the equaliser. But unfortunately, time ran out and the final score was 2-1 in this one. So we'll move back to that screen for you now. So in terms of the game, yeah, Birmingham City didn't start well. And then that red card really cost them in this one. And I think, again, concentration, if we, if we, if we do the right things, it's, it'll lead to good things. And unfortunately, in the game, especially against Manchester United and Reading recently, we've seen where Blues, when, they're, when they concede a goal, their concentration goes and then they concede another one and then the game's gone pretty much because Reading had the momentum in that one. The Manchester United scored three in about six minutes in that one. So it's disappointing in, in that regard as well, but uh, if we can sort out these errors, it's something we can work on and hopefully going forward we can pick up more points by reducing these errors, which have been part of that game the whole season really, regardless of who's the manager. And One real bright, spot, bright, bright point from this game though is Lucy Jones making her debut in goal for Birmingham City under uh, not the greatest of circumstances, but the 16-year-old made her debut and looked... Apart from apart from the putting the um, having to take a penalty and conceding that goal, which you cut, which you, which again the, the striker has the advantage again in in penalty kicks and in the second half I thought her distribution was okay. She's someone who didn't look shaken by coming on and making her debut in such a massive game of relegation six pointer. And I think she's someone who you should be looking forward to seeing in the future, especially if this red card isn't overturned. But I expect it will be because it was a bad decision in my view. Feel free to get jump in the chat and send any messages you want to talk about in this game if you're watching. I will answer them as soon as I have the chance to. But let's hear from the reaction from the uh, assistant manager, Tony Elliott. This is what he had to say to the media because Darren Carter had to miss the game due to illness. He said, The red card changed the game massively. Everyone knew what was on this game and decisions like that have a massive effect on what happens. It's not over. And we have, to, we have said that to the girls. We will keep pushing, keep driving, and hopefully we can turn things around. I will say I admire Tony's positivity. And that's something the, the team need right now. It's not over yet. And things certainly have got a lot of, uh, certainly have got a lot harder for us after this result. Eight games remain for both relegation threatened sides with Leicester now having a five point cushion over the Blues. Let's take a look at the runnings for both sides. Leicester City have West Ham United. Manchester United, Everton, Chelsea, Arsenal, Manchester City, Reading and Tottenham Hotspur. That's the top seven sides currently in the WSL and Everton. So it is by no means an easy run, especially with the battle at the top so tight. Meanwhile, Blues have Spurs, Arsenal, West Ham, Man City, Everton, Brighton, Chelsea and Aston Villa. There are certainly tough games in there with the run that Spurs are on at the moment and the need to not drop points in the likes of Arsenal, Man City and Chelsea as well. I think if we're realistic, we need to get a win from one of Everton, Brighton and or Aston Villa. Any points from the other five games are going to be a massive bonus in this relegation scrap. If it comes down to the final day and needing a win at Villa Park, we all know we have done it before and can certainly do it again, even though Claudia Walker is no longer at the club. In other news, international call-ups are happening this week. Christy Murray and Lisa Robertson, both midfielders, have been selected for Scotland for the upcoming Pinatar Cup, a competition they did very well last time that uh, happened. And also Academy Trio Ellen Valentine, Sophie Phillips and Taylor Reynolds have been selected for Wales' under-19 squad to take on Scotland coming up soon. 
Speaking of squad selections, we will look ahead to what Birmingham City have to do, in my opinion, going forward with the starting 11 and give some players a chance to thrive once again. Sorry about that. Sarah Ewans is the prime example for me. She played just 31 minutes since the turn of the year, despite being on the bench since that defeat to Leicester back in December. When I've seen her play, despite the injury that she did have, I thought I can. I think of hard work. I think of the ability to hold the ball up, and a threat in front of goal, despite uh, a lack of goals so far. The versatility of our front line with the likes of Lucy Quinn, Jade Pennock, and Libby Smith is a nice thing to have. But in games where we are losing the midfield battle, they are often isolated and running after the ball. If you have someone like Ewans that can hold the ball up and allow others to get into better attacking positions, I think we'll be better off. It also frees up Via Trikisari to play as a free-roaming midfielder in an attacking position behind the striker to try and work some magic as she shown against Leicester City. She can really very skillful and technical on the ball. She can dribble for days, but she can't do it all by herself and she needs to get more higher up the pitch to influence the play a bit more. And the, and the likes of Christy Murray can do the same thing as well. She's got a very... Uh, wide range of passing ability to find that killer pass. And that brings me also on to Lisa Robertson. She was the unfortunate casualty of that red card on Sunday. There was a notable disappointment from those around me, particularly one supporter I know, after her number was put up on the electronic board. In a game where you need to win the mid midfield battle, you want players like Robbo tackling in there. And I think we saw a similar thing in the Leicester City game away last year. If you fail to win those 50-50 battles, you'll be outplayed and Leicester City have done it now twice to us, and it could be something that we'll live to regret if we don't uh, change it going forward. If in the unlikely event the red card is also not overturned, do Blues get the option up for an emergency loan Emergency loan for a keeper? Jones has a bright future, uh, but you can't risk the, the, the run the risk of her getting injured and having no available keepers at all, with Marie Hurahan still out injured at the time of recording. I'll try and leave this on a bright note, though, um, which uh, I always try to do. It's great to see the, so many familiar faces in the stand on Sunday. Birmingham City fans, as you might know, have had to go through a lot of things these past two or three years. But it's great to see so many still in the stand supporting the team. It, it, it felt like things were really starting to get back to normal on Sunday. I felt everyone being able to cheer their team, get back together, see, all, see familiar faces that they haven't seen perhaps in like a few months or a few years. And it's it's just it was just great to see. I, I was just great to be part of that atmosphere again at a game. I haven't I've, I've been to games this season, but it, it's just, just it's just it feels it feels like it's getting better, and uh, that's good to see. And I let Captain Louise Quinn have the final word today, as she tweeted earlier today. There is so much fight in this squad. Blues will always keep fighting, and I couldn't agree more. Keep right on, folks, and I'll see you again very very soon.